Welcome to the Leading Movement Health Series. I'm your host, Phil Wagner, founder and CEO of Sparta Science. And today I'm super excited to have Paul Funk because Paul is a retired four-star Army general. He last served as a commander at Army Training and Doctrine Command, also known as TRADOC. You know, he's described it very succinctly as a people-driven command. It's responsible for 32 Army schools that recruit, train, and educate over 500,000 soldiers a year. And leadership at this kind of scale ultimately requires values. You know, we can also call those fundamentals. And we'll go through some of the funk fundamentals here or, or watchwords, because a lot of times health is not something that's like a true or false question. It's something you, you, you don't necessarily achieve, but it's really this journey. And that's one of the fundamentals we can even talk about is training is a journey, not a destination. But probably my favorite, you know, aspect that, that Paul talks about is leadership is a contact sport. It requires daily interaction. So I'm super excited to have uh, General Funk Paul join us on the show today. Thank you. Bill, thanks for having me. This is a tremendous opportunity, and I, I really do appreciate uh, you hitting on the fundamentals. Uh, you know, those are 40, 40 lessons. I, I was in the Army about 42 years, so I learned one thing a year. So I'm a slow learner, but that's okay. Uh, a lot of them, a lot of them uh, carry a lot of weight, I'll tell you that. Yeah, but but I think a lot of your fundamentals too talk about simplicity, right? And so one a year, if it's a good one and it's simple and allows you to focus, I think it's it's uh, well served. Absolutely, I mean simplicity is the most important uh, trait we have in everything, right? What that's what leaders are supposed to do: take very complex problems, almost unsolvable issues, and then break them down into uh, into orders and drills that their soldiers can go out and execute on a battlefield somewhere around the world. Hmm. And so simplicity is, uh, is key to a lot of that, frankly. Yeah. And, and you hit on that complex problems. I mean, health, right? Yes. Health, health in our nation, yes. health in the yes. fighting force. That's a complex problem. So why is it so important, you know, to organizations, whether it's the army or in general, why is this health piece so, so important, do you think? Well, they are, the soldier is a system, right? So that the health of the system is manufactures itself through you know, a variety of different things. The Army has now come out with what uh, they've termed the holistic health and fitness program, which is dynamite, right? It involves physical, mental, spiritual, um, nutrition. It involves uh, all those kinds of issues that were really been after sleep as a major component of, uh, of overall health. So what we're doing is learning what it means to use this, to have the soldier be a system and then to actually fuel that system through a variety of different means. Um, you know, if we can't, if we're not fit enough, the battlefield of the future, Bill, is going to be incredibly, incredibly dynamic. It just is. And it's going to be explicitly violent and it's going to involve split second timings and the stamina necessary to compete and win at that level is going to be uh, like our world-class athletes that we have today. We are going to have to have that kind of stamina and that kind of staying power to win in the battlefield of the future. And then not too distant future, frankly. And so to do that, you're going to have to do this, take all the, all the aspects of fitness and apply them to the soldier so that he or she has the best chance to survive on the battlefield. Yeah, I love that description of, you know, we talk about the army as a system, but then the individual is a system. Yeah, right? yeah. And it, we can't look at the the physical or the movement side as, as just that physical component, right? Correct. There's other components, the spiritual, yeah. the emotional, right? Yep. H2F certainly does a good job encompassing those. And I think yeah. the army in particular has recognized that. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, you, you look at the condition around the country today, right? We all know the stats. And, you know, we know that America's got a problem in the fitness arena about with its young people, and we need to change that condition, right? So the Army's developed the Future Soldier Prep Course. Uh, and what that is, is a, a conditional um, enlistment so that for 90 days, so you can come in, whether you're overweight or you, or you can't pass the physical standards or you can't uh, pass the mental standards, the, which is the Armed Services uh, Vocational Test or the ASVAB. If you can't uh, pass those, the Army will help you 
get to that level. We in the country got to recognize we got to help these kids. We need we can't be taking the sports and and the programs out of the high schools and the middle schools because it's costing too much. We got to figure this out, frankly. Yeah, and and I, we chatted on it briefly before before we started recording too. Of like, you know, I think that it's hard to a lot of times from the outside recognize that the army is such a big recipient of the nation as a whole. Yeah, and 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 some of the things that have gone on have, you know, the challenge for leaders within the army is they're receiving individuals, cultures, values, physical fitness that they've then got to alter in hopefully a very short amount of time. in a performance oriented or yeah, performance oriented training realm where everybody has to meet a certain standard. Mm. And because we understand the dynamics of what the battlefield is going to be, is going to be, I mean, that we're not training this just to be, you know, happy with ourselves. We recognize that the, you're going to have to be, have the stamina and the fitness to compete on the battlefield and win in the future. Mm. And so it's, it's critical. And you keep using this word, which I really like stamina. You know, how, you know, how do you, how do you think some of the key pieces to improve that stamina, mm -hmm. you know, are within the, the army or organizations in general? Well, frankly, stamina involves endurance, right? Endurance of mind and spirit and endurance of phys physical endurance, right? So I think what we have to be able to do is work towards longer term commitments on health and fitness and and education, frankly, to, to for the mind, you're going to have to have the stamina to be able to think faster than your enemies, right? So you're going to have to get inside their what they would term the OODA loop and, and actually get inside the enemy's decision cycle and attack uh, from there. So in order to do that, we're going to have to develop programs that exercise those kinds of things. That's where the Army came up with performance-oriented training years ago, hmm. right? So the human form learned learns two ways, significant emotional experience and repetition. So if, we, if, if we're uh, achieving a standard by performing tasks at the standard continually, that brings mastery. When you have mastery, you can dominate. When you can dominate, you have the stamina to continue the fight. So it all, it all kind of is systematic, really, Phil, in my opinion. Yeah, and I, I like how just again back to the simplicity. You're like, hey, there's two, there's two ways that that humans learn. One is this significant yeah. emotional experience. Yes. The other is repetition. You know, it, those are kind of the two ways. It, it it seems like you and the and the army kind of look at how do we upskill folks. It's, it's yes. certainly one of those two areas, right? Right. It is. And so you know what what is you know every morning uh, for 42 years and and many times even when I was deployed in combat. Every morning I got up and did some sort of physical activity. Hmm. Why? Because I like that. I don't like that. No, because I, it, it, it was repetition. The body learns that way, right? It, it then it pushes itself and endures it. And so, and then, and then that in itself becomes uh, a significant emotional experience when you achieve success, whether, or you, or you fail, right? So you, you got to continually test yourself and push the boundaries of where you are so that you can get better, right? You can't improve by sitting around. You just can't. Yes. Yeah. So in a way it's, it's almost a lot of times, correct me if I'm wrong. It's the repetition or yeah. lack thereof that triggers the next cementing, if you will, of that significant emotional experience. Exactly right. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's why uh, standards are so important, right? Mm. They're important because when, if you can achieve the standard and then move on, that's great. If you can't, at least you know what the targets are so you can continue to repeat that task till you reach that standard, right? So it gives you a benchmark. It gives you a target. It gives you an aim point for success. And then you continue mission, right? Yeah. And then you, I guess you imagine you would hope that the, the experience of failure, right, is not one that's, um, you know, completely debilitating. Right. That experience. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, you want uh, somebody once said it might have been Dr. Seuss. I'm not sure. But I he <laughs> said, uh, said, you know, success is failure turns inside out. Right. That's yeah. what it is. So everyone has failed to achieve a standard at some time, some time and place. I know I have on many occasions. But what I learned from that is, OK, what 
you know, we th- that's why the Army's after action review process is so good. Mm. Because, you know, you take that after action review process, you say, OK, what happened? Why did this happen? And and you usually started out <laughs> with what I failed to do was yeah. and I didn't achieve this standard because of this. And then what you do is you learn together through that. Right. You learn more from failure than success in many cases. Mm. Right. So then how do I achieve the standard next time? And you use, you know, what are we going to do? How are we going to change it? And what what tasks do we need to, to do to to get to master a skill? So yeah. I, uh, I I actually you think you learn a lot more from failure than you do from success in some areas, for sure. Yeah, the after action report is such a great, you know, habit within that military culture. Yeah. You know, the, the saying in sports is winning conceals, losing reveals. That's right. right. Exactly yeah. right. I mean, yeah. same thing, right? When you're trying to do, what did we fail to do in order to not, you know, when that's why our training programs are so good because we use that process continually in everything we do. Yeah. And I think for any leader listening to that concept of an after action report is mm-hmm. such a critical habit, yeah. you know, to, to really kind of cement and trigger to make sure that significant emotional experiences. Yeah. The learning. And then, and you can't fix everything every time. Right. So then you, then you, what that, what the leader then does is prioritize those things you can fix now, what you're going to wait to fix mm-hmm. in the future. So you keep your eye on that prize. And then, you know, what, what you did well doesn't need to be overlooked, but it can be say, okay, we're pretty good at these things. So you spend the time on the things you're not as good at. Mm. That allows you to, um, that allows you to get better collectively. Yeah. And a lot of times it's a, it's not always an enjoyable process to have an after action review, you know, in medicine, it's, it's called the M&M, the morbidity mortality. Yeah. Right. After something bad happens, let's review. Could we have done anything better? Yeah. And what could we have done? I've seen that on St. Elsewhere. I know exactly what you're talking about. Man. Yeah. And it's, it's, it certainly is not a comfortable experience uh, exactly. but it's where everybody can learn. Yeah, that's right. And so, you know, and they, and the, the real secret for the junior leaders out there is the leaders got to participate. Hmm. They're not just listening. They, they got to be an active, you know, because we have to own up to, to the mistakes we've made in making the decisions or, Many times it's I made this decision too late, which didn't allow this unit to get to the flank. And then or, you know, or we failed to use this um, battlefield effect uh, to, you know, whether it be smoke or whatever it is, we failed to allow for the time for that to let it occur. Right. So tactical patience, all kinds of things. You learn a lot from that kind of a process. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. And you kind of hit on this earlier with the with the future of. You know, you see this future of organizations, certainly within the military, but um, in most organizations, even with the rise of AI machine learning, when you use the words dynamic and violent, yes. right, things things are going to change violently and dynamically yeah. as we look to the future. You know, where, where do you see kind of organizations needing to to adapt or, or focus with that kind of environment? Oh, we've got to harden our people. Hmm. Because we're always going to have, we, the American Army, are is always going to have a human in the loop. Right. We're going to automate as much as we can, but we're still going to make that leader make that decision. Mm-hmm. So we've got to have the right skills and the right uh, stamina to to be ready to at two o'clock in the morning. Some PFC might have to be alert enough that she has to make a call to their commander and say, this is happening on the battlefield right now. I see it and we need to execute this, that and other. That's what we got to be able to do. But they have to have the mental fortitude, the stamina, and in fact, the, the skill sets necessary to allow for that call to be occur because there'll always be a human in that loop. Hmm. That's great. You know, I think, you know, your time is obviously, you know, very, very precious. And, and I like to kind of summarize at least my take homes from listening to you talk and your sure. philosophies. I think the biggest one is when you look at the individual within your within your organization, look at them as a system, the individual. Yes. You know, the other piece is there's two ways humans learn, right? I love this repetition and significant emotional experience and things like after action re- reviews yeah. help kind of cement that. Yep. And, th- and I think the last piece, which is 
you know, a little bit of a warning sign, which we all need. The third take yeah. is, hey, the future, what's it going to be like? It's going to be dynamic. It's going to be violent. And by violent, it's not necessarily physical violence. No, it's not. Yeah. yeah. And so we need to be developing our people with the stamina to actually endure that kind of environment. That's why the holistic health and fitness program is so important, Phil. It actually, that's why we have to look at it systematically. What parts do we have to put in here? What ingredients do we have to do to make this cake rise, right? Mm -hmm. We're always going to fight outnumbered around the globe. We're always going to fight outnumbered, Mm -hmm. but we have to win. So we have to give our soldiers the best chance to do that. And part of that's investing in them. Well said. Well, thanks for joining us today. You bet. Don't forget this. Leave your jersey in a better place every day. So for 42 years, I had the I had the a direct privilege to wear the jersey of the United States of America. And every day I got, I went in, uh, every day I put that on. I wanted to make sure at the end of the day I could leave that in a better place. That's from a book uh, called Legacy by a guy named James Kerr. That is the single most. I got it right here. The single most. Um, you see how it's tabbed out and everything. Yeah. That is the single best leadership book I've read in a long time. There, the other one is uh, Marty Dempsey's No Time for Spectators. That's what we got to uh, realize now. This this military, this army, this this next future force, it's not going to have. We can't have spectators. Everybody's going to be in the game. Everybody's got to be in the fight. Everybody's got to meet the standard, and everybody's got to be ready to give it their all. We need that. The nation needs it. The world needs us to lead too. So let's not forget that as well. We, I mean, we wear the jersey of the greatest team ever assembled, and we got to leave it in a better place every day. Thanks for having me today, Phil. Yeah, well said. Thank you.